Noswaitar, good evening and welcome. Thank you for joining us. Welcome to this Cambria University Centre question and answer session. And tonight it's all about getting into teaching. So if you've joined us this evening, hopefully you're uh, thinking about potentially a career in the wonderful world of teaching and education. So before we get started, just to introduce ourselves, my name's Lizzie Stevens. I'm Head of Inclusion at Cambria. Um, and I'm joined here by some wonderful people uh, here on the panel who will hopefully answer all of your questions this evening. So uh, if you can introduce your, yourselves and tell us what you do, uh, I'll start with Hannah, please. So my name's Hannah and I'm the programme lead for the Childhood Studies uh, BA and FDA that we offer here at Cambria in partnership with Aberystwyth University. So it's a great first degree for anyone who's considering taking their first steps towards teaching. Thanks, Hannah, and thanks very much for joining us this evening. Uh, over to you, Gary. Hi, I'm uh, Gary. I lecture on the uh, the Childhood Studies that Hannah was just talking about. Um, I also jointly programme lead uh, the PGC, the Teacher Training Programme at College Cambria. Fantastic. Um, Rebecca? Oh, you're on, you're on mute. That's a phrase we always get to, get to say quite a lot. So, <laughs> hi, Rebecca. Hi, Lizzie. Sorry. Um, I lecture on the Childhood Studies degree as well um, for Hannah, and I've joined your programme Lead the Peace Set with Gary. Fantastic. And last but definitely not least, uh, Susan. Uh, not with that. Um, I'm, I'm very glad to be here as a guest of my Cambria colleagues. I'm Susan Chapman, and I work um, in the School of Education at Aberystwyth University, where um, I teach on the PGCE course, the teacher training course. Brilliant. And I'm dying to ask you, Susan, is that Aberystwyth University behind you? It is. That's a very beautiful building indeed, isn't it? It's Thank a very you. beautiful building, yes. And how is the weather today in, in Aber? Um, well, it's a little bit grey at the moment. Um, it's been a bit like that. Yeah. Yeah, not, not terrible, not terrible, not one of our best days, but definitely not one of our worst. Yeah, pretty much the same here, but I think we're on for a good weekend, so. I think so. Okay, and over to you, our, um, our audience. Thank you very much for joining us. Uh, if you've not done one of these Q&A sessions before, if this is your first time joining us, then uh, it's very simple. Basically, we're here to ask any, uh, answer any questions you may have or if there's something you'd like to discuss with us, this is an opportunity for you to have uh, to say what you'd like to say, ask the questions you'd like to ask. How do you do that? Will you add it into your social media device? But uh, and we will we will endeavour to answer them as we go along. However, if you don't want to do that this evening, don't worry about it because you will have plenty of opportunities over the next days and weeks to find out more. And we've got lots and lots of ways that you can contact us. So if you would like to uh, tomorrow, if you if you think of a question you wish you'd ask, then you can give us a call. And our number is 0300 Let's see. Yeah, there it is. 0300-3030-007. So you can give us a call. Or alternatively, if you don't want to uh, give us a ring, you just want to know more information, you'll find lots and lots and lots of information all over our website all around uh, our teaching qualifications, and that's www.cambria.ac.uk. Uh, that's www.cambria.ac.uk. Or alternatively, you might want to speak directly to one of the HE team at Cambria, and you can do that by email, and uh, they will get back to you very quickly, and that's he at cambria.ac.uk. So lots of ways you can contact us if you don't get the answer to your question this evening, or if you think of something later on. But we're here to support you and to make sure your journey into teaching is the best journey it can be. Chris, hi, welcome. Thanks ever so much for joining us. Really pleased you're here tonight. Um, and you're an HGV tech and would like to get into teaching. You're dyslexic. Would this be a problem? Well, I'm going to answer that because, oh, sorry, I didn't introduce myself, did I? Oh, did I? Yes, I think I did. Um, didn't I? No, no, I, I often do that. I forget about myself. Well, Chris, just for your benefit, I'm Lizzie Stevens. I'm head of inclusion. So I'm responsible um, at Cambria for 
um, all things learning support, specialist support, equality and diversity, and um, mental health and wellbeing. So you've probably uh, asked the perfect question for me. So uh, I'm not going to pass this to the panel. I'm going to have a chat to you about uh, being dyslexic and why it's important, actually, that we encourage people with dyslexia to get into teaching. At Cambria, we celebrate neurodiversity. It's highly important that our teaching staff um, and teachers across the whole of Wales are reflective of our student population. So we know that about 20% of, um, of learners in Cambria, and this is across the board, across the country, it's around sort of 20% in education, are neurodiverse. So that means they might be dyslexic, they might, um, they might have uh, ADHD, dyspraxia, dyscalculia, uh, or any other specific learning difficulty. So if our learners are diverse and neurodiverse, we want to make sure that teachers coming into the profession also uh, understand um, not just the challenges of dyslexia, but also the benefits and the creativity that that can bring. And I'm sure you're very aware of the way in which your brain works. Uh, yes, it might have challenges, but actually also uh, Dyslectic teachers often make the most creative teachers of all. And I've observed some sessions in the past where um, neurodiverse teachers have just come up with the most incredible problem solving uh, uh, and interesting um, sessions. So yes, absolutely, 100% can you go into teaching as a dyslexic, you will get support. Uh, and you will also get the opportunity to learn about some fantastic resources such as read write software that we have available. If you come to us at Cambria, you will meet with our specialist tutor who will be there to support you, th support you throughout your whole journey. Um, and uh, in addition, we will provide you, we will work with you to uh, ensure that you have resources that you need. If you need a lot of resources and a lot of support, we'll, su we'll, uh, we'll support you with applying for disabled students allowance. But please, please, please do not let this be a barrier. Like I say, uh, it's important that we encourage uh, neurodiversity into the profession. Um, and we're very, we're very proud of our uh, neurodiverse um, staff at the college. Um, oh gosh, questions are coming hard and fast here. I hope that answered your question, Chris. However, what I will just say is if you want to know more, please do contact us on he support at cambria.ac.uk. That's he support at cambria.ac.uk. If you drop us a line, we'll get back to you and have a chat with you about uh, the support that we offer. Gemma, hi, welcome and thank you so much for joining us uh, this evening at this live uh, Q&A session. Your daughter has just started Level 3 childcare. What will her next steps be after this course to become a primary school teacher, please? Wow, that's that's amazing that she, she already knows exactly what she wants to do and how wonderful to go into primary. So who of our lovely panel would like to start with this question? I'm happy to, to start. I'll probably pass to some of my colleagues who know more than myself, I think. But um, hi, Gemma. Um, at College Cambria, we, we do a teacher training course aimed at post-compulsory. Um, so it, it's those who want to teach uh, from sort of A-level in, in college sectors. Um, Aberystwyth University and, and Sue's, I'm going to come to you in a minute, if that's OK. But Aberystwyth University, um, they have a, a PGC, a teacher training aimed um, at primary and secondary. Um, now, I, I know that um, Susan is going to talk about the provision in Aberyst within a minute. And if I don't mention um, Hannah and the Childhood Studies degree that we do here, then I know Hannah will be in, in very angry with me, Hannah. So why don't I, I'm going to sort of bat over to Hannah. So maybe, Hannah, if you explain a little bit about the Childhood Studies, um, and then maybe we go to Susan. Does that make sense? Yeah? Brilliant. OK. Hi, thank you, Gary. So one of the options, one of the routes that she could take to get in would be to do the childhood studies degree that we have here at Cambria. We are partnered with Aberystwyth, so you get your degree through them. We work very closely with them. And the way that we deliver our course is quite unique. So it's one full day per week and then independent study around that. So that allows people to juggle any other commitments that they've got around that one day. Um, but it also means that they get lots of support. We normally have nice small groups where they get lots of individual tailored one-to-one -one support as well. 
And then after that degree, she could then look at whether she wanted to go and get her PGC with QTS. And there's lots of different ways she could do that as well. So that's definitely one option, one way of doing it. And especially if she wanted to stay close to home, if she's already been studying at Canberra as well. So past to you, Susan. Yeah, yeah, I think we've I think we've got the order exactly right here, um, because in order to do to train to be a primary school teacher, um, it's a postgraduate course. So that means students need to complete a first degree, such as Hannah's just described, the childhood studies course, which is pretty much designed to prepare people for a primary school training course. It's important to note that that childhood studies degree in itself it's not a teaching qualification, it's a, it's a general qualification. Um, students, having followed that course, sometimes become primary teachers, sometimes they go into um, managing childcare settings or uh, social work or speech therapy, lots of things. But it, it, most of our students are really interested in primary. At Aberystwyth, we offer a PGCE primary education, which is a one year course well, it's more accurate to, get, to call it 10 months. It's a very, very intensive course um, where the students spend 24 weeks of that course on placement in primary school, learning alongside expert practitioners. Our role in the university is to prepare students um, for the theoretical and the policy context of their work um, and to support them while they're in primary schools as well, because um, we work very closely with our partner schools. Partnership is going to be a very important theme this evening, partnership between Cambria and Aberystwyth, but our partnership with our partner schools um, in mid Wales um, for the most part. Um, it's it's a fantastic course. Um, I, won't, I won't whitewash it at all. It's very, very intensive. It's very hard, but anyone who has done a level three childhood childcare course and then a degree through Cambria is very well prepared for the demands of teaching so it would be great to see applications from students like like your daughter in the future and we wish her well with her studies Thank you, Susan, and thank you, Gemma. I hope that asked you, answered your question. However, if you would like to know more, please, please do contact the team um, in many of the ways in which we've already described, but uh, just drop us a line and uh, we will get back to you very, very shortly. Okay, welcome, Megan. Thank you for joining us. Uh, thank you for being here and thank you for your question. What sort of qualifications would I need to be a primary school teacher? And you know that's a really good question because um, I'm sitting here. I I'm, I work in inclusion, um, and I'm I'm just wondering, uh, you know, what what is the, what is the difference between the qualifications and what do people actually need? So Megan, you've read my mind there. So thank you for bringing that question up. Um, who would like to describe for us uh, what the qualifications are and what and what's the difference between the qualifications? I'll ju I'll jump in. I think um, okay. Um, so, kind of on the previous question, um, Hannah and and Sue's partly answered some of the things we were saying there. Um, so there are two sort of routes, but you, you would need to have you need to uh, complete an undergraduate degree. So get your degree first, then you could move on. So after a degree, you'd move on to doing um, your teacher training. Um, there's um, there are three sort of options, really. You could teach within the primary, you can teach in the secondary, or you can teach within the post-compulsory sector. Um, to teach within a primary school or secondary, you'll need to do, or you would need to do a, a PGC, um, a teaching qualification with qualified teacher status. Uh, so that's called QTS. Um, at Cambry, that the post-compulsory one that we deliver here doesn't come with QTS. There's not a, a requirement for that. So. So in answer to your question, really, Megan, um, it would be starting off doing um, a degree, getting your degree, and then it would be doing your PGC with a QTS, um, hopefully Aberystwyth, with, as Susan was saying before. Does anyone else want to jump in? Yeah, I'll jump in. I'll jump in now, Gary, because there's um, um, there are one or two other things that, that people need to take into consideration if they're considering a career as a primary school teacher or, or considering applying for, for PGCE, because... In order to, one of the entry qualifications is um, in the Welsh context, GCSE grade C in English or Welsh, first language, 
maths and science. Now, I think it's important to bear this in mind as early as possible when you're thinking about thinking about the qualification and not to see if you don't have any if you don't have one or more of those not to see that as a barrier because there are lots of opportunities for um addressing that but one thing and, and hannah you might have had this experience one thing i find very disheartening is when students come to talk to me in their second or third years and say i want to be a primary school teacher and then we realize that they don't have the qualification and so it, it, it just means it just means that it might take them a little bit longer to get onto PGCE. But I don't know whether anyone in Cambria wants to pick up on on opportunities for ensuring that students have got that level of qualification at GCSE before they think about applying for a PGCE course, because you know better than I what you offer at Cambria. Um, I don't mind saying that actually, um, Megan, I don't know whether you're a student with us currently um, I, or whether you're you're at school or I don't, we don't know that. What I would say is the best thing to do is to come in and talk to us. We've got a fantastic student services department um, on all of our sites and they have uh, careers advisors there who can advise you about qualifications and, and uh, can sit and talk you talk you through your career options. So I think that's a really good port of call. However, um, I know there's more information as well on the website. And uh, do any of my colleagues, um, Gary, is there something, do you want to add to that? Or is that the best way, just pop in and see us and have a, have a chat? I know that Rebecca is probably more your area than mine. Um, Obviously, you can do your GCSEs, but then there are students I know at Collie Cambria who will reset GCSEs. So maybe yeah. Rebecca, I think, is probably best here. Yeah, so. thanks, Gary. Um, within any qualification at Cambria, you will get the opportunity to do your reset and um, depending on your prior qualifications or your prior kind of um, level of qualification. But we do offer night classes as well, which may be an opportunity. Um, it might be worth coming into chat to us about that. There may be a fee attached, um, but it's quite small. Um, and it's worth doing that um, just to be able to get those qualifications for you before you start. As Susan said, it's you're getting it early on is quite fundamental. You might already have them, Megan. So uh, it might not be a worry for you. But I think a really interesting question anyway. So thank you very much for bringing that up. So uh, just in case you've only just joined us, you are here on our live question and answer session and it's get into teaching tonight, which is uh, the wonderful world of becoming a teacher. How do you do it? What do you need? Well, that's what we're here to help you with. Charlotte, thank you very much for dropping your question into us and welcome to you, Croso. Uh, you'd like to go into further education teaching. Oh, I've lost the question. There it is, you're back again. What can I teach in further education with a social work degree and over two years experience as a social worker? I have A-level qualifications in health and social care and psychology. Thank you, Charlotte, a really comprehensive question there. And uh, I think you've given us lots of details to work with and um, how exciting that you want to come and work in the wonderful world of further education uh, where it's, um, it's always an exciting, always an exciting time, especially this time of year. So, uh, that sounds great. Now, who of our panel would like to uh, to give Charlotte some advice or or some information around what she can teach? I can do if you like. Um, Please do. We do, yeah. have, <laughs> we do have a health and social care um, department at Cambria. Um, we do offer play. We offer to uh, support to try and get placements of people within a PGC here. Um, we have lots of other departments and lots of different colleges would, you know, also you could go in to teach so health and social care there. Um, any other areas other than health and social care, you may want to speak to the individual places that you're looking to work within. Um, but I know at Cambria, as Lizzie said, that you could speak to our um, team as you come in to talk about different options. But health and social care jumps out at me as one area that you could teach in. It's a big Gary, growth yeah. area. And I know that I know that we have our courses. It's one of our um it's one of our largest cohorts within the college, health and social care. Lots and lots of students, lots of young people wanting to go into that field. So I do know that as a, a teaching um, opportunities are, are, are vast for that area. Um, and I, I think that's representative of other, other um, colleges within the sector as well. So uh, I don't think you're going to have any trouble. So just to recap there, Charlotte, what, uh, what Rebecca said, um, if you want to pop in and see us, please do come and have a chat with us. Um, have we got any open events coming up, Gary, at all? 
Um, not necessarily I'm aware of, but I, I'm just slightly different. But um, Charlotte, your your name's ringing about. I think we had a chat earlier on today. Um, so please, yeah, you're welcome to come in. You can come in and have a chat. Obviously, open days, but you can come in any time, really. Uh, yeah. If you give me a call, we can organise it. Have a chat with myself and Rebecca. And I'm sure Rebecca can go into more detail on um, your social work qualification and possible placement. So, so I'm pretty sure we spoke earlier. Uh, but yeah, please, please feel free to come in and we can um, we can talk together. Yeah. There you go, Charlotte. You've got an invite for a one-to-one uh, -one personal visit um, with the right people. So take them up on that. And the way to contact is you you um, you can contact us through he at Cambria .ac, No, yes, he at Cambria .ac .uk, or you can um, you can get some more information through the website. And you can also contact us, I think, through the website as well, or through your social media. Um, and there you go. I'm, I'm catching them out here by saying website first. And if you want to give us a call anytime, you can ask, you can call us and you can ask to speak to either Gary Wynne Jones or Rebecca Mountfield Paulett. So uh, you can ring us on 03003030007. I hope that answered your question. If not, and just to remind people, uh, if you've only just joined us, or just to remind those who joined us earlier, don't worry if you if you don't want to ask your question this evening or if you wake up in the night and think, I wish I'd asked that or I wish I knew more. Um, we are here to, to, uh, to support you and to answer any queries you've got. So please do get in touch in whenever, whenever that is, over the next few days or in a few weeks, whatever you need. It's all about getting into teaching tonight. That's what it's all about. We're here to encourage you uh, to join the, the greatest profession. So um, please send us your questions into your social media um, and uh, let us know what you're thinking. Now, we did have some questions come through earlier. Um, and again, it's, I think we've, we've answered a few that we had through earlier as well around, um, around actually what are the qualifications you need. But here's a really, really interesting question that we got through. Um, about when courses start and how long do the courses generally take. And I think that's really relevant as well if um, if you are sort of like, if you've got work commitments, family commitments, how, how does that work? So um, who would like to take that? Gary, do you want to start on that one? I'll jump. Okay, yeah. So um, the what we do slightly different at College Cambria is um, our, our study uh, in terms of lectures and seminars is over one day a week. Um, so if you were going into the teacher training, the PSET, the post compulsory uh, teacher training with us, um, you would either study at our D side site or our Yale Wrexham site, one or the other. Our D side um, site, we hold the sessions on a Tuesday, so you'd be with us on the Tuesday, and our Yale Wrexham is always on a Friday. Um, now, so you'd have one day a week of sort of lectures and seminars. Uh, there'd be additional time needed for things like your assignments and placements and so forth. In terms of how long it would actually take for your studies, you have a choice here really of either uh, full-time or part-time. Um, both are still one day a week. Um, if you're full-time, you would be with us for the whole duration of that day and part-time, you'd be with us for part of that day. Um, if you are full-time, your study be over two years. Um, and if you're part-time, you'll still be with us, I'm going to say a year, but in reality, it'd be around about May, end of May when you'd be finishing. So, so you can study over one year or two years, um, and it would be one day a week, which is, I think it's one of the sort of unique selling points really here, where, you know, many of our students will uh, be working other days of the week, uh, and they have one day, an intense day of study, uh, like Susan said about Bristol, but very intense, lots of work to do, but it means you can balance other work-life sort of commitments as well. Um, Hannah, is it worth, do you want to just mention maybe the childhood studies, which is slightly different? Is that yeah, so slightly different in that we have three years of study here. So if you choose to do the FDA with us, that's a foundation degree, that's a two year study. It's the same modules, it's the same content, but it means that you come out with the foundation degree at the end. Whereas, and there's more focus on work placement in those two years as well. 
Whereas if you choose to do the full three-year BA, then you come out with a full honours degree at the end. Most of our FDA students choose to take the option to top up to a BA at the end anyway. So it's either going to take you two years or three, depending on which route you take. And it'll still be, like Gary said, a full day. Um, it depends. So I couldn't tell you exactly which day it would be because it rotates. Um, and it would stay on that day for the full three years of your study. So one full day, nine o'clock until about half seven at night depending and we have a range of modules that go on throughout that day as well there's no part-time option with us though it's just a full-time one so two or three years so just to clarify for me and maybe for charlotte as well so if if i'm looking to get into teaching in the further education sector which is also known as uh, post compulsory is that right yeah so if i wanted to do that that would be going down the route of the one day a week and but if I wanted to work in uh, primary or secondary education, that would involve the much more intensive, comprehensive programme. Is that correct? Yeah, it's not so much that it's still one day a week if you do the childhood studies with us, but it's over three years. Over three years. Right. Yeah. OK, <clears throat> fantastic. Thank you. I like to get these things uh, sorted <laughs> in my own head. So I hope that, answer, that that's helped and answered some questions there. And when do they start? Just, sorry, just to clarify, when when do the courses start? Shall I answer that? Um, well, we had yeah, induction please. last week. <laughs> induction was last week, so right at the beginning of October. And then the first week um, is this week, actually. So it'll be the same next year. Um, right at the end of September, we tend to have an induction. And the first week of teaching starts right at the beginning of October for both the PSET and for the Child of Studies degree. Brilliant. No time like the present. Yeah, fabulous. Uh, Megan, hi, welcome back again. Uh, thank you for your questions. You're keeping us on our toes here, which is exactly what we want you to do. Um, you want to work in Wales. Brilliant. Glad to hear that. Would you have to study the teaching Greek degree in Wales? And would it help? Well, that's a, that's a really good question. Susan, I, I'm just wondering with you being there, Abba, what's your thoughts on this? Um, yeah, thanks. Thanks for coming to me, Lizzie. Um, I think the, the simple answer is, Yes, it would help, but it's not absolutely essential. Um, I wouldn't say that no one who no one who trains in England would ever get a job in Wales. That 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 that's simply not the case. But what I would say is that um, I don't know how well aware you are of this, this Megan. But um, in schools in Wales, we are in the middle of um, a huge curriculum transformation. Curriculum for Wales started um, properly last year. Um, it runs from foundation learning age three right up to 18. Everything is changing. And the curriculum in Wales is very different to the curriculum in England in so many ways. If you trained to teach with a um, um, teacher training provider in Wales, you would be prepared for curriculum for Wales which you know simply would not be the case if you if you were training in England. Um, and I think it, it would be an advantage to you to train in Wales because you would be better prepared. You'd understand the system. And um, I'm, I'm slightly hesitating because I'm, I'm never quite sure what to say to people about this, particularly if they're not right in front of me. But one of the aspects of training to teach in Wales is the use of Welsh. And no matter, well, I, I'll tell you what we do in Aberystwyth. We, we run a fully bilingual course, but lots of our students come from England. Lots of our students have not a word of Welsh when they start training with us. Now, I'm not going to, I'm not going to pretend to you that we'd send them out the other end fluent Welsh speakers. We don't. But we do send them into schools with a basic knowledge of Welsh, a basic knowledge of pronunciation, greetings, classroom language. Um, and if you are going to teach in Wales, that will be a part of your, your teaching career. Um, and by training in Wales, you'd be better prepared for that than you would if you trained elsewhere. So, you know, I'll reiterate what I said at the beginning. It's not essential, but it would definitely help you to be better prepared for a career um, in the Welsh system, which is going to be a world-beating transformative system. And I'm, I'm, I, I do seriously believe that. I think the, the changes that we're making are fantastic. And I think it's a really exciting time to be involved in, in education in Wales at, at any age group, with any age group. 
Um, so I, I really would recommend that if that's a, if that's a practical option for you. Thank you, Susan. I thought that was a really good answer, Meg. And hopefully that um, that, uh, that that's helped you uh, make that sort of decision or start to think along that way. And, and I agree with you, Susan. It's a, it's a really, really exciting time for education in Wales. Um, and uh, and I think it, it could only be it could only be easier if you've if you've studied your degree in, in Wales, because like you say, it's the curriculum, isn't it? So and you're close to it. Yeah, absolutely brilliant. Thank you for that. So if you've only just joined us, welcome to this uh, live Q&A event. That's for question and answer. I shouldn't need to tell you that if you're all thinking about being teachers. But this live event is all about you, giving you the chance to ask the questions you've always wanted to ask and some you may maybe haven't even thought you wanted to ask until this evening. Please pop your questions in, pop it into your mobile, uh, your social media device and let us know what you're thinking. Uh, share your thoughts, share your questions, share your queries. But don't worry if you don't want to do it this evening. You can catch up with us at any point. Um, you can contact us very, very easily either through, our, through our website on www.cambria.ac.uk or you can drop us an email <clears throat> on uh, he at cambria.ac.uk or you can give us a call and um, I will read that number again uh, 0300 3030 007 just because I like to sound a bit like James Bond. So <clears throat> moving on uh, we've got other questions that have, co have come through and um, Oh, somebody's asking, which I think is a really good question. Somebody's actually asking about uh, the partnership, how we how we work together in a partnership. Because um, obviously we've got Susan joining us here from sunny Aberystwyth this evening. And um, how how does that work? And what's the benefit of it, really? Why, why is that a good thing? Um, who'd like to talk a bit about that? I'm kind of looking towards sort of, Gary and Susan but Hannah you're looking you've got a smile on your face Hannah do you want to have a chat about it first I just was going to mention that we work very closely with Aberystwyth um that we all our work is moderated that we're always involved with discussions module wise um so I think it's a question that I get asked a lot as well that's why I was smiling um yeah I think you can rest assured that when you work with us that we work very closely with them but I'm sure Susan will have something to add Susan, Gary? I'll, I'll just jump in quickly. Uh, yeah, exactly yeah. what Hannah said, really. I think one of the notable things as well, and it, it's key in any sort of relationship, um, is that sort of honesty. We've worked with Aberystwyth now for, I think it's eight years, maybe. Um, you know, I know Susan well, um, and we have those honest discussions. So, yes, we're, we're fully involved with all sort of the moderation and the sort of training between Cambria and Aber Aberystwyth. We also have um, I've got a close working relationship that you only get to over time. Um, and that's, I think, is one of the, the key things, really, um, knowing and having those honest discussions. Though, so, But um, I'm, I'm going to pass on to Susan. But um, I think we're, um, yeah, honesty to me, that's what I would say, though, honest, open discussions. Yeah, I mean, I think there are a couple of things. Um, yeah, you know, we, we The modules that, that we teach in Aberystwyth, are the same modules that are taught in Cambria. I think that's an important point for students to understand that the, the childhood studies degree that Cambria students follow is the same as the childhood studies degree that our students in Aberystwyth follow. It's just that, you know, your, as has been explained earlier on, your teaching arrangements are different, um, but the content is exactly the same. So students are coming out with the same degree slightly different route, slightly different experience, but they're coming out with the same degree. And I think that's that's vital that, that potential students understand that. Um, and I think those of us who've been involved in, in the, the partnership for, for a number of years have, um, have come, found all kinds of, of benefits. I mean, Gary, and Hannah and Rebecca know this. I, I, I moderate a lot of the assignments on their modules. I find this absolutely fascinating. It's, re it's really good for me as a practitioner to read a work of students working on very different modules from the ones I teach. Um, and that, that gives me a really good insight into the work that you do. Now, I train teachers 
So anything that helps me understand the education system in Wales is a good thing. And I think one thing that we should say, and I think this is also reassuring, is that our external examiners, who are the people who oversee the quality of our degrees altogether, and that's Cambria and Aberystwyth, have praised the quality of our partnership, have actually praised us for precisely the things that, that, that Gary has said, that this is this is a genuine um, sort of dynamic partnership. It's not a case that Aberystwyth writes the stuff, hands it over, and that's the end of the story. Um, we we talk, uh, we share training, we we're, we're in discussions all the time, and I think it was it was really good to hear that from an external authoritative source. I said, actually, I've seen lots and lots of partnerships like this, and this is really this is a really strong one. So I, I think that's a that's a I know it's kind of a it feels very remote from the experience of students to be talking about external examiners. But I think it's evidence of how well the two institutions have worked together over the years and, and, and what it's produced in terms of, kind of mutual benefit. Um, OK, so if you if you are thinking about getting into teaching, and you're thinking where to do it. Well, the, the absolute um, as we've, we've just been hearing from both Gary and Susan is the benefits to you are that you get the best of both worlds. I think we can safely say that. Um, you can, you know, you can you can benefit from the from the vast experience from Aberystwyth and the quality assurance processes, but also from that uh, local, from the exciting the exciting programs that are in are in Cambria. Um, I'm also would like to add from an from an inclusion point of view. Uh, I've spoken to many students who um, have chosen to study at Cambria because they want the quality they want the quality that the partnership provides but also they're able to stay local and for some people uh, it might be through uh, you might be a disabled person uh, you might have um, caring responsibilities you might have a young family or whatever reasons it might be the cost of living uh, there are many benefits to uh, for people or requirements for people to stay local and this is not just your local college but now is also your local uh, university center which i think is a really positive and person-centered approach um hannah did you want to add something there or, or rebecca I, just... I did actually lizzie i was just saying it might quite more but you still get that lovely graduation experience at the end if they, uh, they wish so they'll get to go to avarice with they go to the great hall and have that that lovely formal experience with their family and friends and have, you know, make it into a weekend and go for that experience if they want to, which is always a nice way to end and celebrate. That's great. So not only do you get a fantastic uh, qualification, you also get to go to sunny Aberystwyth where the sun always shines and you get to go to a fantastic event. So that is exciting. Thank you for that, Rebecca. Nice addition. And it is important. Celebrating what you do. Study is not easy. Study is, is, is quite hard. But uh, it's we must celebrate that. We must celebrate our achievements. And I think actually uh, that that end experience, that chance to celebrate with your family and your friends and the colleagues, the people you meet on your course is, is a really exciting thing. Like you say, not for everyone, but uh, but for some people, that's a, a wonderful opportunity. And I will, I will guarantee, I will guarantee sunshine for for your graduation. Thank you. If, even if it's even if it's only the sunshine of your smiles and your family's smiles, it might actually be raining outside, but you'll still have a lovely day. So you know Perfect. that's that's the important thing. So there you, you do go. guarantee we've got, sunshine. We've got the commitment from Aberystwyth. Uh, join 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 us for entering into your career into teaching and you will end on sunshine so how wonderful is that thank you thank you for that do keep your questions coming in this is keeping us all on our, our toes it's it's exciting and it's great for us you can see how passionate we all are about um about this subject you know if you've been humming and hawing about getting into teaching um you know please don't hesitate um it's it's an exciting career i think uh, most of us here are probably teachers are we yeah. I, think, I i i yeah and and it is to be able to share your knowledge and your enthusiasm and your skills with others is, is a real gift um and if, if you're just sort of like oh i'm not sure i'm not sure um i'm going to ask the panel i'm going to put you on the spot here and ask the panel what 
what made you get into teaching and uh, why do you think people should go into teaching? Maybe that's more pertinent. Why should people go into teaching? Hannah, you, I'm afraid you've smiled again. <laughs> it might be a nervous smile, who knows? <laughs> but I'm going to go to you first. <laughs> Well, I obviously teach here now, so I teach at the university centre, but previously to this, I'm a primary school teacher. So the reason that I chose to get into that was to help children that are less privileged than others. I feel that it's important to be able to spot those children in the room and to be able to give them the very best experience that you can. So I was very keen to do that, which is why I decided to go into primary teaching. And I also I think given those learner relationships are the best thing that you can have and are the best thing about teaching in my experience. And I don't think that that's changed working with adults either here, really. I think that's a, a really lovely answer. And it does, it makes a difference, doesn't it? You can, you can make a difference to people's lives and young people's lives, which is just a real privilege, isn't it? Uh, Gary, why did you get into teaching? And what, why, would, why do you think people should? Yes, that's a hard act to follow, Hannah. So now I'm on the spot, really. Um, I actually recall, I recall when I was a, a child myself, many, many hundreds and hundreds of years ago, uh, and I remember in school struggling with certain things, uh, difficulty with some aspects, and almost to an extent being left in the corner um, to sort of get on with it. Um, not quite as old as having you know, the, the, the hat with a D on it, but um, for me, it's those learners who've maybe got some like autism, they're, they're shy, they're nervous, dyslexic, whatever, they've got some sort of barriers. Um, and it, it's helping that that child um, who maybe can't do something, making that link, that sort of click with them, where suddenly they get it, they can do it, and it's that smile on their face. So, um, so for me, it's it's not maybe the majority; it's the min minority there helping that child who maybe without that input, um, maybe wouldn't succeed. It's just that smile on their face. Um, so yeah, so slightly cheesy, but for me, it's making a difference with with maybe some of the minority. Uh, maybe I was that once. So. Um, yeah, absolute privilege. So um, that's a lovely, yeah. honest answer as well, Gary. Thank you for that, uh, Rebecca. Why do, why should people go into teaching? I'm going to say very similar to Hannah and Gary. Um, I came into it because I really wanted to teach. Um, I had a really good experience with my English teacher at school and really, really kept in touch. Now, years later, and um, came to teach in English, and then I wanted to then teach on the on the HE as well and teach the PGCE. And I think just the so, relationships really that Hannah and Gary described and making a difference. So. That's a lovely answer, thank you. And Susan, what's the joy in teaching teachers? Um, well, I'm just gonna agree with Rebecca, first of all, and yeah, English teachers are the best, uh, definitely. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, that's that's where, that's where, I, that's where I came from. Um, the joy in teaching teachers. Um, the privilege for me, and this was true when I was in school, uh, and it's true now working with both undergraduates and um, trainee teachers, is that I I get to see people progress. And the thing about teach training particularly, you know, when, when we start the course, and it's, as I said, very short, very intense course, 10 months to turn somebody into a teacher. And people are very nervous at the beginning when they come and they do, and I know... Gary, you've, you would see the same thing, but when they come and, and nervously do a micro-teach in their, the university block, um, where they just teach a, a short 15-minute lesson to other people in the group, um, and they, they see the people around them, their, their fellow students, being impressed. And then within a few weeks, they're standing in front of a Year 7 class or a Year 9 class, and they are... They are teaching. They are they are mm. controlling the room. Now they they make such progress, and for all that we're working with very bright people with you know they've they've got their degrees. They're they're committed, ambitious. So many of them don't quite see how good they are. So the great joy actually is pointing out how good they are that you know, perhaps that lesson wasn't 100% as you'd planned it, but let's have a think about what, what, what the children in that class did learn, 
what they did experience, what positive things happened, perhaps that you didn't plan for, but are still positive and still important. So it's that it's that privilege of pointing out to people that they're actually quite a bit better than they thought they were. Uh, what I think that's, that's the joy for me. That's a wonderful answer. Thank you. So if you are sitting there um, at home now, just and you're not quite sure, hopefully we're, we're, we're not, we, you know, we're not doing it for any other reason, except that we truly do believe it. it's a wonderful career. Uh, if you've got any doubts at all, please come and come and have a chat to us. Pop into our student services and have a chat to our careers people there or alternatively get in touch. Uh, we have got an open event. It's Wednesday, the 8th of November. That's Wednesday, the 8th of November. That's 5 till 8 p.m. So if you've got your calendars there open, pop that in. Uh, you can come and meet the staff there as well. Um, but in the meantime, don't delay. Come and talk to us about it. Um, Gary's offering free one-to-one, uh, -one, uh, full tours and cups of teas. And Susan's offering uh, sunshine. So um, I'm sure Hannah and Rebecca can think of something to offer as well. But look, I mean, the reality is, the reality is, if you get in touch with us, we will, we treat everyone as individuals. We will spend time with you. We will talk it through with you. We won't try and convince you if it's not right for you. We will talk through your options. Mm -hmm. uh, there is no, there is no pleasure in us encouraging somebody to become a teacher where it's not the right the right route for them we'll talk it through with you and be, be honest about the expectations and the realities of teaching as well that's very true isn't it Cambria team yeah we will we will talk it through we will be honest okay so uh, if you've only just joined us uh, you're very late, but it doesn't matter. We're very happy to have you here and uh, please do send in your questions use your social media device pop your questions into the chat and uh or, or even your thoughts uh is there anything any, anything you think you might already have um, done some teaching just don't have the qualification you might have done some you might be a trainer and thinking about making that step over i don't know but uh but pop your questions in if you don't want to ask us now please uh get in touch with us um at any point and we will get back to you the team uh at Cambria University Centre are very, very good at getting back in a very short time. And I think it's usually within the day, isn't it, that, that they're answered. Uh, we know Donna. Donna's unfortunately not here with us tonight, but Donna's all things HE, and uh, she's very, very good at responding to um, queries. Oh, hi, Patricia. Thank you so much for joining us uh, this evening. And a really good question. Any tips for personal statements for primary? Well, I'm I'm not I'm not the person who can answer that. So I'm going to look at my panel, and I'm going to I'm going to guess at maybe Gary. Um, I'll start off, but I will definitely be coming to Susan though. By the way, so um, yeah, uh, uh, personal statements. Uh, it's quite sort of pertinent to myself. My own daughter is writing a personal statement for university, so I've been thoroughly involved with this at the moment. Um, uh, it's about saying why you want to do that, why the why that program is for you, why do you want to be a primary school teacher, um, why do you want to be you know the type of university you want to go to, what sort of a campus is it a is it like a, a city university, um, or you're looking for like a small sort of campus, your experience as well, have you um, done work maybe experience, have you supported in a school setting. Um, so, yes, yeah, so why really? Uh, and again, I'm sure Susan will maybe correct me or the more, but um, the university will want to know why you want to do that course. They'll want to know that mm -hmm. you're going to be staying on that course. They want to know that you've done your homework in terms of you know what the career is um, and you know that pathway. Um, and you, you show that commitment through the things that you've done previously. So I'm thinking you know, I started the primary school teacher many years ago. Um, but yeah, I remember doing work experience in schools, um, helping sort of clubs and that as well. So, um, but yeah, the university wants to know that why you want to do that course and why with them. Um, Susan, is it all right if I pass? You can add some more. Absolutely, yeah, absolutely. And and you know, I would agree with absolutely everything you said, Gary. Um, but uh, you know, when I'm thinking about when when we're looking at applications, one of the things that that we we like to get a sense of is you as a person. Um, because when you're a primary school teacher, you're in there with those children all day, every day. And we want we want to get a sense of what your personality is, because 
not every personality is suited to being in that, in that situation. And we also want to know about the range of, of gifts and abilities that you are going to bring to the profession. Obviously, you've got a degree, you know, otherwise you wouldn't be applying for, for a PGCE course. But there are so many other things. And when I'm advising students about this, I often mention a, an experience I had a few years ago interviewing. Um, and it, the, the personal statement was fine and the student was fine. And then, then we asked the question about what could you contribute to um, uh, extracurricular activities? And the student mentioned something about netball. It turned out that she'd actually played netball for Wales, but hadn't mentioned it in her personal statement. And I always use this as an, as an example. Don't, don't think that your non-academic achievements are not relevant because they are. We want to know about your academic achievements. We want to know about your work experience and your reflections on it. But we also want to know if you if you play netball, if you can play the ukulele, um, you know, if you've done drama um, in uh, a local theatre. All these things matter because they're part of you and they're part of what you have to bring um, ultimately to a school. But in the first instance, to our course uh, and, and to your colleagues on the course where we like people to collaborate and share experience. So the short answer is we want to get a whole picture of you. you know, we can, we can see your degree, we can see your exam results, but we want to know about you as a person. Oh, wow, that was some great tips there. <laughs> I've taken loads away from that. That's uh, you could you could bottle that. So uh, hopefully, Patricia, that did answer your question. It's I think it probably did. I think there were some fantastic inside tips there. So uh, it's not often we get somebody who who actually reads these um, applications uh, on our panel to be able to answer so succinctly and so. Um, helpfully really so get away get writing your personal statement uh, add lots of yourself into it and tell us about your um your hobbies I think that's the was the key things there wasn't it so um yeah get on with that wonderful okay um we are times times getting it's, gosh it's gone fast hasn't it panel gone really fast this evening because mm -hmm. we're we've got such interesting questions I think coming through so um if you if you're thinking I've got a question or I want a, a statement please please just pop it in uh, your social media now but don't worry if time's running out for you because you can get in touch with us at any point uh, during the week um we have got a couple of questions I think I don't know whether we've cut we've we've sort of covered them I think um somebody was asking about career options uh upon completing this qualification but i think we've kind of covered that haven't we with um mm -hmm. with the two types of teaching post compulsory and compulsory uh but again if you think we haven't co haven't covered that and you'd like to know more just pop it in pop it in the chat uh in your social media chat and we will answer you um we've we've talked about the partnership uh and how well that works and what's in it for for you as a as a potential teacher, what, what's what's the good thing about studying um, at Cambria uh, in partnership with Aberystwyth? And I think we've we've shown there just why that is a really good benefit for lots of different reasons. Um, we have we have had a question around student finance, and what I would say, Donna, who is the guru, Donna is. Um, is definitely the group guru about all things finance and it's really helpful around finance but you might be thinking about that and I think uh, it's definitely a question that we, we get asked a lot about how much is this going to cost how am I going to finance it where am I going to and and I think for the purpose of uh, not being able to answer it fully and at this evening I would direct you to our um, to our email and Donna will pick that up and we'll be able to answer your questions. That's he at cambria.ac.uk. Um, that's he at cambria.ac.uk if you would like to know more about finance. And I do know that there is stuff on the website as well, isn't there? So, um, yeah, that's uh, I think that's the best way. Gary, uh, Hannah, would you say that's the right thing to do? Just drop us a line. 
Yeah, uh, top of the line. Yeah. Sorry, Anna. No, you're okay. And there's also um, Student Finance Wales as well. It's really self-explanatory if you head to their website or if you're based in England, then Student Finance England. So you can just go and have a look for some basic details on there too. Fantastic. Okay. Um, the, the last question that we've had in, which I think is is actually uh, not just one for me, one for, one for everyone really. It's, it's, it is about inclusion, about um, get information and how can they get information and support about equality and diversity and again um you know we we are an extremely inclusive environment and that's not just about uh, the building and how it's how it's built although it is an inclusive environment we have well-being hubs we have um lots of different areas however it's also about um inclusive in the way in which we um support and the way in which we um we look at individuals and treat everyone as an individual and um, we recognize that people have protected characteristics and we recognize that sometimes uh, they, they, they might require somebody to talk to. And we have, you, we have got for you a very dedicated, a fantastic equality and diversity um, coordinator. Her name is Alice Cherm. Um, and she will, she will not just uh, work with you on any issues you might be having around equality and diversity, but she'll also help you celebrate it and, and uh, recognise. And, and um, she, she runs some really fun and interesting campaigns. We were, we were very present at the uh, Chester Pride March this year and uh, also at the Wrexham one. So there's lots and lots of stuff going, around, uh, going on. Um, around equality and diversity and we're always looking for volunteers so if you do come and uh, come and study with us then um, I'm sure and you're interested in, in running some campaigns or there's something you'd like us to to know about then uh, please do get in touch with Alice on equality and diversity at cambria.ac.uk that's equality and diversity at cambria.ac.uk Lizzie, can I just can I just comment on, on that? Because when you were speaking about about diversity before to to one of our one of our um, inquirers, um, you made the point very well how how important it is for staff at Cambria to reflect um, the whole population. And can I just endorse that for education across Wales for yeah. primary education as well yeah. that um, the people we have standing in the classroom should be as diverse as the children in the room with them yeah, and that's that right. that's across all all protected characteristics and i think there have been barriers in the past for some groups in looking at the teaching profession and i think that's something that we've all got to work on to break down um so i think what you said what you said about cambria i think goes for the whole of the teaching profession and when it when we are looking at primary candidates it's one of the things that that we try and take into account into account to um enhance the diversity of, of the teaching workforce and it's it's often a superpower and that's what i say once uh you know once once you've seen um somebody with adhd delivering the most exciting and entrancing session you've ever seen in your life you, you you stop calling it a disability and you start calling it an ability and i think that's really exciting um and and I totally agree. Um, and the you know I think it's about the three to four percent um, of our current teaching population in Wales um, have any form of disability, never mind neurodiversity. And yet that's not reflective in our classroom. So we need to get those numbers even up. So if you are sitting there thinking, oh, I couldn't possibly do this study because I can't concentrate for more than half an hour, or I or I, I learn in a certain way, don't let that be a barrier. We will knock those barriers down with you and we will make sure that you have access to everything you need. So we're getting there, it's, it's, we've got one minute left to go. I'd just like to say thank you very much for joining us here this evening on this live uh, question and answer session all around getting into teaching. We hope we've been of use to you. I'd like to say a massive thank you to our panel who have been uh, fun, been really interesting and you've you've answered those questions. And I'd just like to uh, finish with reminding you what we've been saying throughout the evening. Come in and talk to us. If you've been sitting on the fence, if you're not sure about getting into teaching, don't hesitate. Come and have a chat. We promise that we will, um, we will be honest with you and we will help you find your route. Our open event is the 8th of November. Uh, if you fancy coming along to that, it's five till eight. We'd love to see you. 
but Gary's offering free visits uh, with free cups of tea. And uh, I'm going to throw in a biscuit there as well. So uh, drop Gary a line on he, he at cambria.ac.uk. And uh, please do enjoy Gary's um, snacks and biscuits uh, on your visit. And finally, if you are concerned about any barriers that you may have, please do contact me and my team uh, in the inclusion team. And we are HE support. Oh, there's an interesting one. There's learning.support, HE support at cambria.ac.uk. And that is spe especially for people from the university centre. I hope it's been helpful for you this evening. Uh, on behalf of the panel and, my, and myself, I'd like to wish you a very good evening at uh, Nostar and uh, see you again soon. Thanks for joining us. Nostar.